Now everyone knows what a laser is. I remember it from my childhood. I used to carry, well not, I didn't carry one around, but I had one. But I really did not know how it worked. So now I know that laser, it stands for light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. Now, light I now laser is used in the medical field to help, such as in the, for eye surgery. Um, it, it passes through the lens and the cornea without affecting the, re the retina. Um, it stops bleeding in the eye, so it's, it's used for, a term for laser used in the medical field is laser eye surgery, and it's very common. An another use is, uh, for example, it's used for um, the skin. Uh, laser skin therapy. So for example, it's used on uh, warts or acne, bad stuff basically. So here, let's just say this is an acne here, and the laser shines on the acne and it kills basically this acne. And what happens is the, uh, the epidermis um, dies, that, that small bit, and a new epidermis is created, a new skin layer is created. So what, what di differentiates uh, laser light to normal light is because laser light, light is coherent. What coherent means is that the, each ray of light is synchronized, the phase of light is synchronized with, with each other. It's the same, it's coherent. So the main question we're asking now is how does a laser work? So I'm just going to draw just, uh, my depiction of a laser. That's a typical laser. So, it's shaped like this, and it's got it's usually got a button here, and usually a keychain. So, what comes out of the laser? What comes out of the sorry, laser? Laser is light. It's a coherent light. And as mentioned, coherent light is synchronized. Uh, uh, each ray of light is synchronized with each other. The phase, the free, the wave. And this differentiates with, for example, a light bulb. It is not coherent. It's got. It's not synchronized. Each ray of light is not synchronized. It's. It's different. The wavelength is not synchronized. So, I would like to just briefly describe the laser process, and then I'll look into it more deeply. So here we've got the button, the laser and the cavity where everything happens and then the output which is the light um, so what happens is when you push the button right it um, it, ha it provides energy into the cavity and this energy interacts with atoms within the cavity these atoms have electrons when this energy interacts with the electron it excites them it puts them up uh, it gives them energy and but when these electrons lose energy they emit a photon, and these photons bounce on the mirrors as like like this, and these photons eventually go out as a monochromatic coherent light. Monochromatic, it's a Greek, it comes from a Greek word, mono is one, mon is one and chromatic is color, so it's one color. That is why lasers have one color, it's usually red, right? Um, so let's just look at how these photons get created. So here we've got a nucleus with the neutron and the protons of an atom. And surrounding the nucleus we have orbitals. And these are where the electrons sit. There's many orbitals. Uh, there's, every atom has a different number of orbitals. And this is an atom. A simple atom. So energy comes into this atom. Or interacts with this atom. And um, so electrons in the lower energy state, when they receive this energy source, they move up to a higher orbital. So from the lower, they move up to a higher orbital. So for, exa for example, electron, energy interacts, it moves up. And this electron we can call it's excited or in, a, in, a, in an excited state. So let me just draw a nucleus again. And so the, these excited electrons, after some time, they will go back to a lower energy state, right? So as they go back, what they emit is energy. Again, 
And this energy is the photons. They are the photons. So look at, let's look, uh, look over some important words in laser, laser language. Population inversion is where there's many electrons in an excited state. It, not necessarily for one atom, but for many atoms. So more electrons in an excited state. And once this is, once population inversion is done, it causes stimulated emission. And what stimulated emission means that for one atom, all these excited electrons, as they go back, they go back, they create a cascade of events going back down to a lower, lower orbital, um, emitting photons, many photons. So it's a cascade of events. So let's review that again. So we have energy coming in, um, exciting the atom or the electrons, and it emits a photon. Now this photon, it can go in any direction, in any direction. Uh, but how, so how does it emit from the laser as one coherent light? Well, we use a mirror. So you can think about it if you remember those uh, James Bond or those adventure movies. I'm not actually sure, but I watched it somewhere. And, you know, the adventure guy shines a torch. So the light, he shines in a mirror because he wants to open a secret passage. So he shines it at a mirror and it gets reflected. And this is exactly the same concept as a photon. It bounces off mirrors and eventually it will leave as an output of the laser. So the photon is reflected. So let's just, uh, I'll just draw it to explain it. So these, here's mirrors surrounding the laser and here are the photons. So the photons, you know, they, they move in every direction. They move left, right, up, down. But eventually, they will leave out. And this is the laser light, the laser beam. It's coherent, right? OK. So now let's look more closely at a ruby laser, a typical ruby laser, and the structure of it. So when the button is pressed, it has a power source. And this power source, this is what creates the light, basically. So here we have this black, long, rectangular thing inside. It's the cavity where everything happens. Also called a ruby rod in the ruby laser. It's where all the good stuff happens. It's where the electrons get excited, emitting photons and all this other stuff. Surrounding this um, ruby rod is a flash tube and this is it's the energy coming from the power source it excites the electrons within the cavity so let's recap so we have population inversion and this is where there's many electrons in an excited state which creates stimulated emission this is where it creates a cascade of events uh, releasing more photons electrons going back to a lower or energy state releasing more photons and then we have monochromatic. Mono is one, chromatic is color. So it's one color. Same, it's basically same frequency. And coherent is coherent light. So thank you, please comment.